In this video you will learn how to configure React Multilanguage i18n website. At some point of developing your website you might want to make it multilanguage, which actually means you have not only a single language like English, but maybe you need several translations of your websites for users from other countries. For example, let's say you want to translate your website to German. How can you do that? And typically we are using for this a package which is called i18n, as you can see this is the official website, and this is the most popular framework which is used in different languages and frameworks in order to bring multilanguage support to you really easy. And in this video we are mostly focused on the frontend and as an example React. And actually for React we are not using IET Next directly, we are using it through additional package React IET Next, which is exactly binding of this IET Next package inside React. Let's try to use it now. In order to do that we must install a single package and it is React IET Next. But it is not all, obviously we must also install the core package IET Next itself. Now we must jump inside our project and here in source of our React project I want to create a new file and let's name it i18n.js. The main idea is that the most simple case of switching between languages is to store all your translations inside your bundle of client JavaScript. Then without page reload we can simply switch translations in our website and we will store all our translations as the first step inside this file. So first of all here we want to import i18n from i18next. Now here we must call i18n dot use and inside we must provide a React bindings. This is why here on the top we must import init React i18next from React i18next. Now here inside use we are providing this init React i18next. And after this we are calling in need and we are providing inside the object. Most importantly here is to provide resources which stores all our languages. Let's say that here we have English and German. Then we can create a key English, this is also an object. And inside we must write a key translations. And inside this translations key we will store all our translations. For example let's say that we have a word welcome that we want to translate. So here we are creating a key, it can be whatever, you can even name it foo, and the value will be welcome. Now we must copy paste this part for every single language that you want to install. In our case it will be just German, so de, and here translation of word welcome must be willkommen. And as you can see the key is staying the same across all our translations in different languages, this is extremely important. And additionally to resources we can provide here different options. This is why here let's write debug true. It helps with debugging a lot because we will see some logs from IET next. Then fallback language will be English because this is our default language. And we want to set here interpolation as an object. And we are providing inside escape value which will be false. Why is that? Because React escapes all our values by itself, we don't need to do that additionally. And the last thing that we need here, we want to export here as a default our IAT next configuration. So again we are storing all our translations in this file and we want to reuse them everywhere. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have lots of advanced courses on different web technologies where we create real applications and prepare for the interviews. You can find the link in the description box below. Now let's jump back into the video. And in order to do that let's open our app, as you can see this is a simple component. And on the top we can import use translation from React IET Next. Which actually means from this package we are getting a hook, which makes fast translations available in any component. So what we want to destructure here is a letter T, or you can write translate, this is a function, and we are calling here use translation, without any options. Now inside our H1 I want to render a property. And here we want to render t as a function and provide inside a key. And our key was welcome, because this is the only string that we created there. As you can see in browser we are getting a warning here inside console. React i18next you need to pass an i18next instance by using init react i18next. 
What does it mean? Essentially here we passed it inside, but we never used this i18n that we prepared. This is why we must jump inside main TS and import it here on the top, just like this. We are simply importing our file that we prepared and we are good to go. As you can see now we don't have any errors and let's reload the page. And this is exactly what I wanted to show you. We are getting lots of logs from IAT Next and they are extremely helpful to debug problems. First of all here we can see language changed, English because this is our fallback language. Here is IAT Next initialize, we see the whole bunch of options inside and after this we are getting errors, missing key English, translation, welcome, welcome, which actually means we did something wrong without translations of the keys. Essentially, IAT Next does not see our keys at all. And actually the problem here is that inside our resources the key should be translation and not translations. Let's check again, we are reloading the page and we don't get any warnings. We are getting here IAT Next initialize and here we see word welcome on the screen which actually means we successfully configured IAT Next and it uses our default language. But the next question is obviously how we can change our languages. And this is why we must build a switch between them. And in order to do that inside our app, I want to create languages array, which will have objects. And here, first of all, I want to store our code, for example, English. And the name here will be our label. So here we want to write English. Now let's do exactly the same but for German, so it will be DE, and here we will write German. And now what we can do, we can simply render these languages inside as a switcher. So here I want to loop through our languages, and we are getting access to every single language. And here I want to just render a button for every single language. So here it will be language.name, and here we want a non-click event. And inside it, we want to tell IAT Next that we want to switch our language. And in order to do that, we must get IAT Next here, and then we can use it directly inside our own click. So it will be IATN dot change language. This is a function, and we must provide a key code inside. And this is our language dot code that we just created. As you can see here, I am missing key. This is why we can say that our key is our language code because this is our unique ID. We don't have any errors, let's open browser. No errors here, we have two buttons, English and German. Now I am clicking on the button German and my text was directly changed. Again, it is happening without page reloading, simply with JavaScript. I am clicking on English and this text is being changed again. So this was the easiest variant how you can use IAT Next inside React. The next step that you for sure want is you want to move your translations to external files. Why that? Just imagine we are talking here about all our translations and we are writing them in a single file. Even if we have like 100 translations, multiply with the amount of the languages, we can have here like 200, 300 of lines just for our translations. It is much easier to support it if we split it to several files and load additionally which actually means it is not optimal to bundle everything in a single bundle. And additionally to this question, we have another question. It is really tedious to add every single key by hands and then use it in your code. Typically what a lot of developers would prefer, especially in big teams, is simply use some translations, like maybe here I want a word foo, this foo does not exist, then I am just calling some command when I am finished with writing my feature, and all these translations magically must appear inside our ID next file, which actually means we don't need to jump here and add all them by hands, it must simply work. And in order to achieve that we can use another library which is called IAT Next Scanner and the goal of this library is to scan your code and extract keys from your code. This is exactly what we want to do now. But in order to do that, I want to create inside my frontend folder a new file which will be IAT Next scanner.config.cjs. Now here I will paste the whole config and actually this is mostly the default config of this library with small changes. First of all here let's look on the inputs. This is what files we are looking for. We are looking here for JavaScript or GSX files inside our source folder. 
We want for sure to skip here our specs if we are writing tests, node modules folder and IAT next folder, which is situated as you can see inside root. Our output will be in root in exactly this IATN folder, this is why we are ignoring it. There are some options for debug, compatibility and the list of functions and this is important because this is for what functions this package will look inside our code. And as you saw we used T there for translations, it might be that you will use IATN.T or IATNext.T. If you are using something else, then you must write it here. Additionally, we are specifying here what languages do we have, it is English and German, default language is English, and here our namespace is called translation. And this is where our resources are situated, it is i18n, then slash language, like English or German, then here will be translation word dot json. Now what I want to do inside console we can call npx then i18next scanner it will install this package and here we are providing our config i18next scanner config cgs I'm hitting here enter and as you can see first of all we got here the whole config from i18next scanner and at the end it shows us what it did and here as you can see edit a new translation key welcome to this file i18n english translation and then de translation Let's look on these files now. Inside frontend folder there is i18n folder now and we have here two additional folders te and en and inside we have a file translation json which actually means we are storing all our translations as a huge json. And here we have a key welcome but no value which essentially means after this scanner somebody need to go and by hands put all these translations. But even person without any knowledge of programming can do that because it is simply the JSON file. So here we must write welcome because this is in English and inside DE we want to write welcome. Now we can go back inside of frontend source 18n config and instead of these resources we want to create resources again with two keys English and German. But here inside translation we don't want to pack an object, we want to pack our JSONs, which actually means here on the top we can import our English from, and here we can just take this path of IIT next English then translation JSON. And exactly the same we can do with DE, and then it will be IIT next DE translation JSON. Now here we can throw inside translation English and translation DE, which actually means now we are not writing all these translations by hands, we simply call our scanner, it scans all our keys inside our project and generates them inside this JSON file. Let's check if it's still working, I'm reloading the page, we're getting welcome, I'm clicking on German and it is willkommen, but now we're taking these values from external sources. Let's try with one more key to check if it is working. Here at the end I want to write T with word news to create a new key. Now inside our console I can run this scanner and as you can see it added a new translation key news. Now I just need to jump inside IAT next English translation news will be a word news and inside DE the translation will be Nachrichten. Let's look in browser, we are getting here on the right news, we are switching to German and we are getting Nachrichten, which actually means our code is working. So now we are storing our translations in external files, we can even load them additionally dynamically, but it is still not flexible enough. Typically in a huge projects you want to store your translations on the backend to serve via API, then you don't need to load any additional chunks and you can load your language on demand. How can we do that? As you can see here I have a folder backend with just a package log with scores and express. So here I want to create a new file index.js and create here an extremely minimal express project. So first of all here we need an express which we are calling by requiring express. We also need here course so we can make our request from the client. And we also need here path because we want to load all our translation files in the API. Now here let's create our app which will be our express and we want to call here app use course and we want to start our API with listen on port 3005. Now this is the smallest express server that you can write, the only thing that we are missing we want to serve our translations here inside. This is why here we can write app use 
with slash locales. And as a second parameter, we can write express static. And here the path will be path join. And we want to get our directory name and concatenate it with locales, which actually means here inside our backend project, we want to create a folder locales, where inside we have English folder and German folder, just like on the front end. And inside English, I want to create translation.json. And here, let's create just an object with key welcome, like we had there, and it will be welcome. And the same stuff inside DE, so it will be translation.json with welcome word, but here we will write willkommen. So actually, what our backend does, it serves as a static files, this locales files, which essentially means our client doesn't know anything about translations at all, we are simply loading them through API. As you can see now in browser, I can access these files on localhost 3005 slash locales slash en slash translation json. Now I can write here de and I can access our German translation. Now the only question is how we can access this API on our client. And in order to do that, we must install an additional package on our client. So inside fronted, I am installing IAT next HTTP backend. And this is an additional package which will help us to get our translations from API. Now inside our frontend folder, I want to jump inside source IAT next. And here on the top, I want to import this HTTP backend from IAT next HTTP backend. And now here after our use in it react, we must try it one more use and provide inside HTTP backend. Our resources is totally fine, but additionally here we want to provide a backend path. This is why here backend is an object and inside we have a load path property where we must paste such construction. So here we have our localhost 3005 slash locales and here we have two variables. It is a language and then ns, this is our namespace, this is just a word translation. The last thing here that we should not forget is to comment out these resources. We don't need them anymore because here we specified that we want to load everything through our backend. Let's check this out. I'm reloading the page. Here we see welcome and news. I'm clicking on German and we see willkommen and news. And it happens because on the backend we didn't translate this news keyword. This is totally fine. This is why we're getting here the missing key inside console. But most importantly, inside our network, we can see the loading of this translation JSON. It is the get request to our locales slash en slash translation. And now if we want to update our translation of news, we can open again our backend locale and create here a key news, which will be news. And for German, it will be news key. And here will be Nachrichten. Now when we reload our page, we are getting here willkommen and Nachrichten from our API. But you might also want to know how to implement optimistic updates inside React and why do we need them at all. And I already covered that in this video.